Welcome to episode 45 of Tools in the Hall. Part of the wonderful mystery of a tool hall is, you don't know what I have. Sometimes, I also don't know what I have. Such is the case tonight. I, I haven't been through the boxes of stuff that's been delivered yet, so we're going to go through it together for the first time. And maybe, just maybe, there'll be some special after dark tools in the hall later on toward the end. So please make sure you stick around to see everything that came in this past week. We're going to start with some repairs. The first one is this Mac 038's Air Impact. It's from a customer who said that he had he had it repaired by Mako, and he said it still lacks power. And I was chatting with him about the, the, the reason why this comes up is because during a normal conversation with a customer that I have, aside from just catching up and seeing how he's doing and you know maybe seeing what his weekend was like and all the rest of it, I always make sure he asks two questions. Is there anything I can help you out with? And do you have anything that's broken? So before we wrap up the conversation, I always, I always make sure that I ask those two questions. So when I said you have anything broken, it usually will do something like this. They'll either say, oh yeah, I got this gear wrench thing or a Sonic thing or something that I, I, I deal with. Sometimes though, it starts a larger conversation. And when I asked him if he had anything broken, he said, well, just a Matco thing. And I said, well, what is it? And he pulls out the, the three it's impact and he said this. He said, I had it sent in with the Matco guy a little while ago. He said, when I went to use it again, he goes, it has the same problem. And that is, it lacks power. And I said, well, he said, I don't know, I'm going to see him next. And, and you know, I think he was taking some time off or, or something, or the, or the Matco guy wasn't being completely consistent with the shop. So I said, look, let me take a look at it for you. No charge. If I find something interesting, I'll let you know. And then we can work it out from there, whatever you want to do or you can take it back to the Mako guy, but there's no obligation to you. And I did that for two reasons. One, just to help the guy out, get him out of a spot. And two, I hope to win some business over that way. And if I can show to be more valuable and reliable than his Matco guy, then hopefully I will get that business from him. He's not a big tool buyer because he's been turning wrenches for so long, but what business he'd like to send a tool truck, I would very much like to get it from him. So, you know, and the fact that I can make some video content out of it too. So I, I did shoot another video on this. So it, I'm not sitting here, you know, does, you know, don't think I'm think, don't think that I think I'm the most altruistic guy. I'm not, because I know I'm getting some benefit from this myself. Hopefully I can win some business. It gives me some video content. Um, and, and he gets a, a full free evaluation of his tool. Well, what I found was when I took this apart, and you'll see this in, in the video on this, was that no one has taken this apart before. It was clearly unserviced. So I don't know the extent to which Matko told him that it had work done, but as sure as I'm sitting here talking to you, there's no work that's been done on this. When I took it apart, there was nothing but old, burned up, gritty lubricant in there. If this thing was ever taken apart, it's been many, many years. But I promise if he sent it with Matko, they did nothing for him, I hope. They didn't charge him for it, because if they did, then they soaked him. And I will tell him that because what I found when I opened it was, this was in need of service. So what I did was, I gave it a full evaluation, I cleaned it, I re-lubricated it, I assembled everything, and I found that there's a bearing in there that could stand to be replaced. But I'll give it back to him now and see if it performs any better. If it doesn't, then he can go back to the Mako guy and give him what for. If it does, great. Uh, and I did him a service at no charge to him. If he wants me to replace the bearing, I can do that. But that'll be a, a charge for that because there'll be some more time and a part involved. But at least I can at least I can do the guy a favor, help him out. I get some video content in the process. So he and I are both making out okay. And this goes back to him. I'm shooting this on a, on a Saturday night. So this will go back to him uh, mon the following Monday. But check out the video on this one. Um, it's pretty interesting, I think, to see the condition of it once I took it apart. And if you don't know how to disassemble and reassemble one of these, it's a complete step-by-step -step tear down and rebuild. So if you're looking to take on some of these projects yourself, that video will be very useful to you. I recommend that you do regularly overhaul your air tools. Take them apart, clean up all the old lubricant, check everything 
to make sure that it's in good order and relubricate, reassemble, and it'll it'll last you for many years. Most guys don't do that though, and you know, eventually it's going to catch up with the tool and it's going to rob the tool of some power. There might be a cost involved of fixing stuff if it gets worn down too much, but this looked like it was in pretty good shape overall, just it needed a lot of cleaning. This this next one's a weird one, and if Alex, if you're watching, this is yours. I got not one. <laughs> But two, Ingersoll 119 Max Air Hammers from, get a load of this, two different guys at the same shop and they gave them to me on the same day. One of them is Alex, the other is Hunter's. I, it's a mystery to me how both of these could break at the same time. I don't know that I've ever seen one of these break before. So I thought it was interesting when <laughs> when uh, I think Hunter brought his to me first and he said, my, my thing's not working. Um, can you help me out with it under warranty? And he didn't buy it from me, so I didn't have any record of its purchase. I didn't have a proof of purchase that we need to submit with a warranty claim. He bought it on Amazon and I, uh, he gave me the proof of purchase from, an Am from Amazon. I'm like, well, I don't know what Ingersoll's policy is about this. Some manufacturers like Milwaukee and Grain Pneumatic, do not honor the warranty if you purchased your tool from Amazon because they don't know who's selling it. They don't know where the seller bought it from. They don't know if it was bought legitimately through Milwaukee's distributor and dealer network or not. So the only leverage they have is to say, if you bought it on Amazon, we're not going to honor the warranty or eBay or any of those other online discount retailers. So I said, well, give me the proof of purchase and I'll see if they'll handle this under warranty. Sure enough, they will. So we sent this off, we sent both of these off. The one that Alex bought, he bought for me a while back, still covered under warranty. So I had all that proof of purchase handled. So we sent both these units in for warranty service and they both just came back. I, I would love to know kind of the, the circumstances at the shop where both of these broke at the same time. I, it's, it's strange to see one break, let alone two. So it's kind of weird, but they're fixed. I got a bunch more of these inductive headlamps. If you haven't seen them, I'm surprised because it seems like everybody is buying these now. They're just an unbranded light. So all the tool companies seem to be buying them. I see them on all the tool trucks. That box has a two pack and I sell them uh, indiv individual lights for 25 bucks a piece or that two pack for $40. I was talking to a Maco buddy of mine who was asking me if I carried the lights. I said, yeah, he goes, what are you selling them for? And I said, you know, <laughs> I sell the two pack for 40. He goes, <laughs> I said, what's wrong? He goes, I have to sell each light for $42. Yep. I can sell a two pack for $2 less than he can sell a single light for. So I don't know what Mako's pricing is to their dealers, but it seems kind of high if that's the case. If he's got to sell for that kind of money to make a profit on it, that's kind of that's kind of ridiculous. So I sell the two packs all the time. Uh, they're, they're cheap enough that, that people don't want to buy them individually. They, they'll, they'll just go for the two pack. And they're cool because they have an induction capacity where you push the button and then whatever mode it's on, all you do is wave your hand by the sensor and it turns the light off and on again. That has four modes. It has a, a spotlight on the side and that nice wide band that has a beautiful floodlight in the front. Just cycle through high and low on each of those. So it goes each, each light cycle and then off. So for five cycles, for five positions in that cycle and then choose a cycle, hit the inductive motion sensor and then you'll turn on and off every time you pass by an object or wave your hand. So they sell like crazy. I'm, I think I'm restocking that like every week. Gearwrench has this cool soft face hammer. These heads unscrew for easy replacement. And if you're doing delicate work and you can't mar your workpiece, these, these hammers are an excellent option. 
they don't sell a ton, but when somebody wants one, they want one. So I always make sure I have one on the truck. I think the uh, the orange face is a little harder, a little softer than the white face. <clears throat> nice rubber grip for a comfortable hold on that, and uh, you can replace these heads individually when they wear down. It's a f cute little ratchet. Little 90 tooth quarter drive, non flex head ratchet from Gear Wrench. Nice short handle to get into tight spaces. The 90 tooth ratchets are, are rather nice. I do like their 120 XPs, and they've replaced all their 72 tooth ones with the 90s now, and their wrenches too. So the old 72 ones are, are out. We can still take care of the ratchets under warranty, and the wrenches we just replaced with the upgraded 90 tooth version if you need one replaced on, under warranty. I don't know that I've handled, I don't think I've repaired a 90 tooth ratchet yet. I sell a lot of them and I keep all the repair kits on the truck to, to handle the warranties, but so far one hasn't broken and I don't know why. I've been selling these now for a couple of years. Um, the 120 XPs break on occasion, um, but it even seems like those are stronger than the 72 tooth ones. The old 72 tooth, seems to have broken the most of, of all the three different versions. So I don't know if they're doing something different metallurgically or how they engineered the ratchets, but these are very strong. Never seen one break yet. When your sockets fall off your impact gun, you probably need a replacement hog ring or retainer ring. That's these guys here. And these are kits that have a bunch of different rings in them for quarter, three eighths and half inch drive impact guns. There's the metal hog ring and there's a rubber O-ring. And the rubber O-ring fits around the end of the anvil on your impact. And then the metal hog ring fits over that and the O-ring provides some tension against the hog ring. Why do they wear out? Well, probably because you're using chrome sockets on your impacts. Uh, but Lindsay, everybody uses chrome sockets on their impacts. I know. It doesn't mean that they're intended to be used that way. If you look on the inside wall of your chrome socket on the square end, you'll see little dimples. Those dimples are intended to fit over the ball retainer on a ratchet. I'll show you. Oh. Yeah, okay. So a ratchet has a ball retainer. Right there. That's a little spring-loaded ball. And when you slide your chrome socket over this, that ball uh, depresses when the sidewall of the socket hits it. And then when the socket sets down all the way, the little dimple in there matches up with the balls and the ball pops back out and it provides some tension against the socket to retain it. That's why there's a little resistance when you take the socket on and off. If you look inside the square drive end of an impact socket, you will see no such dimple. You'll see smooth wall. And that is because the hog ring on the impact expands and puts tension against the inside surface of the socket. There's also a hole on an impact socket and that is not for a retainer ball, that is for a pin retainer system that most people don't use. But the holes exist on the sockets because there are some people who have applications where they want a pin retainer system on the anvil of their impact gun. Yours probably has a ring and that's what these rings are intended to replace. So that hole doesn't really play uh, unless you have a pin retainer system, and, and most don't, so don't worry about it if you don't. What happens when you put a chrome socket on your impact is, you can slide it over that hog ring and you're gonna compress the hog ring until the socket sets down and those dimples now match up with that hog ring. The hog ring expands on all four sides and fills the dimples on your chrome socket. That's not easy to get off, right? Sometimes you have to pry it with a screwdriver and then you break a screwdriver tip and then you wear out the hog ring and start cussing at it and you say, this thing's a piece of junk, it doesn't work. No, it's just that that's not the way it's intended to be used. Don't use chrome sockets on your impact tools. 
Only use your impact sockets on impact tools. You can use you can use impact sockets on your Chrome hand tools. That's okay, but just know they don't have a retain a retention system that is intended to be used that way. So, are you going to still use Chrome sockets on impacts? Yeah, you are. Everybody does. Just know it's not made to be used that way, and you're doing it wrong. And if you prematurely wear it, your hog ring. That's why. And then you know. Hopefully you have a great tool guy says, don't worry, I'll cover it for you at no charge. But if you, but don't expect that because that's not a warranty item. That's you using it wrong. And those, those retainer clips are not cheap. Strangely, they cost like a couple of bucks a piece. This is a replacement battery for a coast light. I had a customer who lost his, I think. So I'm just getting, or he wants a second one, I think. So I'm getting a second one. The batteries, um, the batteries have a, a limited warranty on them. It's not a lifetime. It's not like the lights are. And you know, cause most batteries go bad. Oh, this is a, <laughs> boy, this has been a back order forever. It's a 22 millimeter deep impact socket from Sunex. I love the SunX brand, and when I mentioned some of their stuff on a previous video, one of you commented that he's glad to see SunX getting some love. It's a great brand. I don't think that they make anything uh, substandard in quality, and they have a terrific selection of impact sockets, wrenches, crow's feet are terrific, and none of their stuff is terribly expensive, even on the tool truck. I mean, the, the tool truck price for I think the whole set of metric stubby wrenches is less than $70. And if you want to buy it on Amazon or, or some discount retailer, it'll cost you even less. So there are some very good values there. Their quality is very high and their selection is, is very broad. Um, one, of, one of you left a comment on my videos that you, you picked up a Sunex set of uh, crow's feet, I think you said, uh, off the snap-on truck because the guy took it on trade and he was like, He's just selling off at some deep discount. But I'm, maybe he didn't realize what he had because he turned a customer on a SunX <laughs> who was much happier with the price and the quality. And, uh, you know, you, I, maybe the, maybe the Snap-on guy didn't realize the, what the SunX brand was or what he had, but they are a, a premium-grade tool company. They make premium-grade stuff, but the prices are really affordable. And most everything I know of that they make is covered under, covered under a lifetime warranty. They do have a lighting product lineup that is not covered under lifetime warranty. It's got one year. They have excellent hydraulics. They make, they make very good service jacks. They have really good tool carts. And they do have air tools, but I'm not familiar with them. They look like they're made by Ingersoll, but I don't know. Um, and, and even when I was talking to a SunX rep at a tool show once, he goes, we don't really push them much. He says, we leave the air tools up to the other companies. They just put it in their lineup to have more of a complete offering. And you can find their air tools, I think, at, at like O'Reilly or Napa or one of those guys. Um, so just keep your eyes peeled as you're searching around. You might find some pretty good deals. And the SunX brand is a terrific brand to look for because you're getting great quality stuff at literally a fraction of the price of what you'll find on the Maco and Snap-on trucks. I got a customer who broke a magnetic swivel spark plug socket. This is the gear wrench one. They have this whole thing in a set. The whole set's on sale for like $109. You'll see that same set on Matt Goes Trucks. And this is the 5 8 one with a 3 8 drive extension and extension swivels in there. They have different length extensions and some without extensions in, in the whole set. There's a five piece set that uh, I, I try to keep one on the truck all the time because if I'm gonna put a spark plug socket set on the truck, it'll be that one because the price is good and it has more versatility than a spark plug socket set that doesn't have the swivels. This is a 16 piece impact grade bit set from Irwin. It has Torx and Phillips bits two extensions over here, and some socket adapters. Has three and a half and six inch long 
bits. These are all the quarter drive quick connect shank bits to put in an impact driver. Man, I'm gonna want that. I'm gonna have a very happy customer on Thursday. That Sonex socket was on back order form for a long time and this 3 8 drive 24 inch impact extension from gear wrench was also on back order for him for a long time. So this just came in for him. He's gonna be a happy dude. <laughs> Every week he asked me in order to come in yet and I said, so, no, sorry man, it's still, <laughs> still on back order. I feel like a, uh, I just feel like a broken record. Back orders are so tough to handle. That's not just me. It's 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 so many people are in the same boat. I know a lot of shops still have parts back orders. Other tool guys that I'm buddies with all tell me the same thing. Doesn't matter what brand it is. Everyone's got back order issues. So at least you got some stuff that's coming in. It's on the move. It's a handy little guy. This is a magnetic soldering clamp from Lyle. The center post there has a magnet on it, and you swivel those alligator clips around. That way, if you're busy under the hood, in the engine compartment, soldering something, just stick the magnet post to something, put your wires in the alligator clips, and it frees up your hands. Now, handy little thing. I always, I always keep at least one on the truck. <laughs> uh, Alex, who had one of the broken air hammers, bought some sockets from me a while back and he goes to use his 916 socket and he says something's not right with this I'm like what what's going on he goes he says I think the wall's too thick or something so he shows me his 916 socket and I looked at it and I compared it to another one and sure enough the, the wall was thicker I'm like this is weird so I took a ruler and just measured across the flats and it was a half inch <laughs> so it must have got misstamped at the factory because it seemed to be machined correctly. So sometimes that happens where <laughs> where something gets mislabeled or, or they just misstamped it. So his 916 socket was really a half inch socket, but I reordered him the 916. This is one of the best deals going on a four inch blowgun with rubber tips. If you wanted to buy just these three rubber tips by themselves, they cost $50. Why? I don't know. They're rubber blowgun tips. Why is that 50 bucks? Or you can buy the three rubber tips that come with this four inch blowgun for $30. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This whole thing is $20 less than those three things. I don't know why. So I don't even bother with the tips. I put this on, I put this on the truck. Save people 20 bucks and get them a free blowgun. You can look at it that way if you want to. This is the five piece torque lock locking plier set from Milwaukee. I like these a lot. I, I would give the edge to these over the vice grip brand from Erwin Hansen because these have a torque lock feature on the back where if you need to crank it down a little bit more, Instead of just having a thumb turn, their thumb turn has a hole in it and you can put a screwdriver shank through there and, and torque it over a little bit. These are built a little bit beefier as a result because they have to handle a little more torque. And they also have a lifetime warranty. Pricing's pretty good. On the truck, this five piece sets 100 bucks. And the pricing's a little bit better than the Vice Grip brand from Erwin Hansen. I like this five piece set in particular because it has probably the most useful pieces in it. It has a six inch long nose, seven inch straight jaw, a five and a seven inch curved jaw, 10 inch, what they call the max bite, and probably the most useful kit that you can buy of the locking pliers. They do have a 10 piece set and Erwin Hansen has the same one of the Vice Grip brand, but uh, again, the price is a little bit more and that 10 piece set has things that not all mechanics are gonna like. Some body men will like them because it's a large C-clamp style pliers. I keep this on the truck because most guys are gonna want this most of the time. This four piece 
Ladyfoot pry bar set from K Tool is so gosh darn affordable. I'm, I'm always selling them. Compare the $70 price tag on this to anyone else's four piece set of Ladyfoot pry bars. I had a customer tell me that he wasn't happy with an OTC set he bought years ago because he says the finish is flaking off and he says I would expect that for the price that I paid that wouldn't happen. I said, well, yeah, you're right. And I, I believe the chrome plating should be covered under warranty. So I'll get it taken care of for him. But why did that cost him hundreds of dollars and this can cost 70? And you're not going to have the problem with the finish on these because these aren't a chrome finish. I don't know. It just seems like this is a better deal. That that little six inch guy costs almost as much as this whole set if you buy that under the snap on name. Don't throw your good money after bad. This is a fine set of Lady Swoop Pry Bars. If you need a set, buy a set like this. Save yourself a ton of money. Oh, this is fun. A while back, a customer gave me a broken digital snap-on torque wrench, and he asked us to get an estimator for him, and we did. And after we gave him the price, he was not interested in getting it repaired. He then said to me, do you want it? I said, sure, right? He says, have it. <laughs> so he relinquished his his ownership in this, and all I had to do was pay for the repair, which I'm fine doing. Uh, it kind of confused me that he did that because, I don't know, I mean, it's kind of weird. But he gave up his ownership in the torque wrench. Uh, now I own it, and we're going to put it on the truck and sell it. And we're probably going to ask, you know, twice what the repair cost was, and we shouldn't have a problem getting it. This is a three-inch drive, flex head, digital torque wrench. And Snap-On's torque wrenches are outstanding. They are made by a company they purchased a while back called CDI Torque, and they have excellent quality torque wrenches. So I'm stoked to get this on, on the shelves and put it up for sale. CDI Torque also makes the click torque wrenches. In fact, I had a three-quarter inch one that I just sent in for repair under the CDI brand. So we use a company called Angle Repair, and they're in West Virginia. And they're, uh, I don't know, all they do is torque wrenches, I think. Outstanding. So if you need a torque wrench repaired or if you need it calibrated and they'll even offer a certification, if you work in an industry that requires certification like the aviation guys do, they'll certify it if you want, but they will fix everything and then calibrate it and then put a calibration sticker on it for you. And they're very easy to work with. Uh, all they do, all they do is torque wrenches. They're great. We send all our stuff to them. I have a couple of Coast headlamps that are getting replaced under warranty. The customers have had these, have had them a long time. And they finally gave up the Ghost. But thank you, Coast, for having a lifetime warranty on your products because I got to swap them out. And I don't have to send anything to Coast for repair or replacement. I can just do the switcheroo on the truck take my broken one and I send them to my distributor that I buy my Coast products from and they handle it with Coast on the back end. So it makes it very easy for me. It makes it very easy for you as a customer. You're not waiting for weeks for us to send the light off to say Streamlight for example, which we have to do with the Streamlight products and then wait for it to come back. And I pay for shipping, it's a big pain in the neck. So Coast is much easier and better to deal with in my opinion because of those reasons. Their quality is very high they don't seem to have any any really issues with their with their products, and I'm a big fan. The pricing is even less than Streamlight stuff, so excellent. One of the most elegant wrench extenders on the market comes from Vim, and I have to start touting this stuff more because I know a lot of you like the Vim brand and their selection of tools. They've got this wrench extender, which sells like crazy, you just put your wrench in the jaws here, and then this gives you an extra 15 inches of leverage. A 
comfort grip handle. There is a version of a wrench extender from Mueller Cubes that I also sell. Same basic design, but instead of having a comfort grip handle, it's a square handle with a square hole in it. It's for a half inch drive tool like a breaker bar that you can use to add even more length to your extender. But if an extra 15 inches doesn't do it for you, um, you probably have to take a, a different route. Beautiful full polished finish this has. The Mueller Cubes does not have a finish that's nearly as nice in my opinion. And this is a nice way to elevate your game. It's safer than putting two wrenches together to use that for additional leverage because those can slip and you can get injured. This will not slip and you have a nice grip there where it's, I think it's nicer than the Mueller grip, which is just like a, it's just like a flat bar. And this is gonna feel way better in your hand than that one does. And these are on sale for $62.99 on the truck. Normally they're about 75 bucks and the Mueller ones are about 85. And Mueller has a really big one, super expensive. But the one I, I normally keep in the truck is their 13 inch model. This is the 15 inch model from Vim. One more from Coast, this is a headlamp. This is their 2075 lumen model. This is their XPH34R. All Coast lights have some features I really like. In addition to the lifetime warranty they put on their stuff, they have focusing beams on all their lights and most of their lights are dual power, which means you can swap out the rechargeable power cell for regular alkaline batteries. The new ones recharge with a USB-C connector, which is very handy. And swapping these out under warranty, as I mentioned earlier, is so easy. It's why I prefer Coast over Streamlight. That and the fact that the pricing is much, much better than Streamlight's is. All right, that's it for the tools. Now, for Tools in the Hall. After dark. <laughs> ah, the first one's not really an after dark thing, but it's gonna segue into us, in, it's gonna segue us into the after dark tools. This is a scope from a company, I think their name is pronounced Nick Star or NC Star. I am not familiar with them at all. But I had a new customer who wanted to purchase this and he wanted this one specifically. It's, it's pretty light in features because it's a real bargain tier priced scope. It's a three by nine zoom with a 42 inch element in the front. And I think this costs 75 bucks. How good is it? I don't know. I mean, I can see through it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I, I tend to believe that with optics, you get what you pay for. Perhaps there's uh, far better offerings at a higher price point of that, I am sure. But I cannot tell you what deficiencies this has, if any. Usually you find things like on the less expensive units, they are not sealed as nice, so they can get condensed moisture inside. Sometimes the coatings on the lenses are not as nice or there at all. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not familiar with these guys, so I don't want to pass a judgment. I'm just saying that 75 bucks for an optic is, you know, it might be good enough for his application, and it's the one he specifically asked for. The interesting thing about these is that the company has a lifetime warranty. I've never heard of that in, a, in, in an optic. Now, will you have to take advantage of that a lot? I, I don't know. Um, couldn't tell you. This is not what I would recommend necessarily. If somebody were to ask me to spec out optics for them, I would usually stick with the the better brands like Loopold or Vortex. But this is the one from Nick Star or NC Star. And it's their compact tactical series. This model is the SEC. 3942R. Now, 
Here is... It's always hard to get these things out of the bags. The Walter PDP 9mm Compact, it says Handgun This is not as compact as some compact handguns that I know But it's a really nice gun Walter makes some very good stuff um, I've never really known anyone to be uh, unhappy with them And if you look on the body in the back of there it says it's compact But this does feel very much like a full frame gun. I don't know what's compact about it, to be honest with you. Uh, co I own compact guns and they're all small than this one. And the ones that are compact generally uh, have a shorter barrel, shorter grip. This is a, a full length grip. You can get all three of your fingers around it. It has the combat trigger guard with a concave serrated surface. So you can place your, your non-dominant hand on that and keep the muzzle rise down standard white dot sights polymer lower and it's kind of nice it has some has some uh, knurling molded into the grip there it's pretty comfortable comes with two 10 round magazines And it has serrations in the front and toward the rear of the slide. Some people like to rack their slides from the front. I could never get into that. I always have a, it's, the leverage is always goofy. I'm always pushing against my hand. If I do it from the back, I'm pulling against my hand. I can keep it more stable. So I do it from the rear. Some guys like to do it from the front, but it doesn't work for me. But this one here is a, got a couple of magazines that come with it in the case. It also has... Three different back straps so you can adjust the grip size for your hand. Rather, two come, two additional come with it, plus the one on the gun. Child safety lock, which is a requirement of all new firearms being shipped. Your second magazine and your magazine loader. This helps when you're when you're loading ammo to put this over the magazine and then push down on this and then feed your rounds into the magazine. Way better than trying to use your thumb to push the round in. Especially if you have crappy hands like I do, it's a godsend. Um, very easy to put on there and then either push down the top there and it just lowers the follower and then you just slide the bullet in from the top. Comes in a case that has foam padding in it. Nice setup. And my customer wanted this one specifically, so he's stoked to be able to get that. I, I told him it arrived and he had me text him some pictures of it so he could, <laughs> so he could at least get his fix before he comes and picks it up. Well, that pretty much wraps this one up. I do hope you've enjoyed seeing the new tools and some of the pew pews. And we'll keep folding in some of that after dark stuff as it comes in and I can, I can coordinate it with the shooting schedule that I have for the tool stuff. Part of the issue is that when firearms arrive, we have to inventory them and store them in our sales office, which is the premises we do business out of for our gun sales. So we can have stuff shipped to our home office, in which case when I have them on hand and I'm doing a tool haul, I'll put them in. Otherwise, sometimes the guns come in, they go right back out again. So 
it doesn't always meet, meet up with with the times I'm shooting the the tool stuff. So enjoy it when you can, and I'll, I'll offer them up when I can. We're gonna have some videos with some air tool repairs. We haven't done some of those in a while, but we've had a bunch of uh, broken air tools come in, including that Maco one I showed you earlier, as well as a three quarter inch Cornwell air impact and an Ingersoll Rand 2235 Ti Max came in with a broken anvil. We'll go through all of those for you and show you step-by-step step how to disassemble, repair, and reassemble these tools. And of course, we're gonna have more tools in the haul videos coming down the line. So do me a favor and click down here now to subscribe so that you don't miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, use a tool. Don't be one.